So right off the bat, my favorite thing about the Super Nintendo, Mode 7 graphics. Look at, look at how Mode 7 y it is. It's beautiful. I love it so much. So, so this is, uh, this is Chrono Trigger. Um, one thing I, I wanted to, to talk about with, uh, with Chrono Trigger, um, it, uh, like, you know, like I was saying before, it's a, it's a game that, uh, in a lot of ways, you know, um, really symbolizes, uh, uh, the, the kind of epitome of this era's role-playing game design. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of, American role-playing games being made on consoles. You know, if you wanted to play an American role-playing game or a, or a European role-playing game, you had to go to the PC to play it, right? This came out in 1995. Uh, so I would have been 12 or 13, depending on when it came out in the, uh, in the year. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it was a pre-Square Enix game. But that being said, I did a little bit of research. What's cool about this game is that Listen to this. So the, it was it was designed and and developed by essentially what if we look back and it would be like the gods of the era, the the people who defined just about everything about Japanese role playing games in this in this time, right? Because it was developed by uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi. Hironobu Sakaguchi is a huge fucking deal. Like if you like role playing games, period. If you've played uh, especially a Japanese or a console role playing game, you owe you know, a debt of gratitude to, to Sakaguchi-san. He invented Final Fantasy. It's, it's his baby. So, Sakaguchi-san, um, uh, Yuji Hori. Uh, now, y Yuji Hori is a name that, that you may not have heard before, but you've definitely played a game based on or by, uh, by, by Hori-san, um, because Yuji Hori worked predominantly at Enix on the Dragon uh, Warrior or Dragon Quest series. Um, so if you've played any of those, if you've played Pokemon, uh, if you played Earthbound, they are all directly mechanically tied back to uh, to Dragon Quest. Um, so huge deal there, uh, obviously. Um, the character designs, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this and my, my personal feelings about it, but the character designs are done by um, uh, Akira Toriyama, like, right, huge deal. Uh, if you ever watch Dragon Ball, who isn't familiar with Dragon Ball, same thing. Um, big manga artist that worked with Dragon Quest. Um, and then the music, and I didn't know this until today, until I looked it up. Also, Freckled, welcome back. Uh, until I looked this up, um, uh, so Yasunori Mitsuda did the music for the game, which is really good, but got sick partway through, like fell ill and had to leave the project. And I didn't know this, but the person that filled in for Yasunori Mitsuda, Nobuo Uematsu. So if the uh, if the music in this game seems familiar to you, Uematsu-san is why that is the case, which is quite cool. And I had no idea about that. I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. So before we get into this, though, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna have an unpopular opinion. All right, are you ready? I gotta take a drink before before I talk about this. So, unpopular opinions featuring Adam Koble. Um, I don't like Dragon Ball. I don't like the animation style. It, I don't. It just it, I, there's something about it that bugs me, and I can't place it. I don't know why. I, I, I have some. I have some thoughts. I have some ideas about why that might be the case. I think because. I was already pretty, like, about anime before Dragon Ball really started coming out in North America. And I had already seen, like, Akira and Nausicaa, and I had read some manga. And, like, when Dragon Ball kind of came into the public consciousness, I felt like I might, I might have been, like, a little older than my peers. I've missed, like, I don't have any nostalgia about it. And when Chrono Trigger came out, I was kind of like, eh, I'm really used to, like, Final Fantasy games looking a certain way. I never really played any of the Toriyama influenced Dragon Quest stuff, right? Like in in North America, Dragon Warrior, Dragon Warrior Two, Dragon Warrior Three looks like all of its concept art and stuff, all the box art just looks like like the same kind of trashy, you know, North American Dungeons and Dragons fantasy thing. And Dragon Ball, I don't know, something about it, like Toriyama's specifically Toriyama style, kind of threw me off, and so playing this game even as a kid i was like 
you know, it's it's cool. The game is cool. The story is cool or whatever. But like I wish I wish the art was different. And that I think is something that if you're a fan, I think a lot of people put this as like the top RPG ever because they don't for them the Toriyama art is a bump up from say Final Fantasy 6 whereas for me it's a bump down. It, it feels like it has less I don't know, there's something just like about it aesthetically that doesn't appeal to me um but i don't i don't i'm not saying like i i, I dislike it i'm just saying it, it took a point off right it makes chrono trigger for me like a a nine instead of a ten um now technically this game is incredibly advanced for the super nintendo it does all kinds of stuff that no rpg really had ever done before uh and i think we'll we'll see some of it uh as we as we play i'll try to call some of these these little things out um predominantly uh the battle system um now, here's another thing that's interesting. Despite having a member of the, um, you know, the, the creator of Final Fantasy, the creator of Dragon Quest, you know, this dream team, originally this game was going to be produced as a Secret of Mana game in, in that universe. And instead, they chose to pick it up and, and take it out of, you know, that and out of Final Fantasy and make it its own thing, which I think is really interesting because you see a lot of the opposite behavior happening to uh, the... Um, the the Game Boy um, Final Fantasies, right? Games that were originally role-playing games, but pulled into the Final Fantasy world to sell more copies. Uh, Mystic Quest is a great example of this. Um, now, I actually really like some of those games. There's the Game Boy Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Legend 2, I think was one of my favorite games as a kid. I definitely will play that on, on Retro Sunday, but we'll we'll talk about that when we, when we talk about it. Um, but let's, let's get into... Chrono Trigger as it is. Um, one thing that that I will I will point out about Chrono Trigger is that, and I've talked about this tons of times when we talk about tabletop RPGs. Uh, Chrono Trigger is a time travel game, and I don't think you can do time travel. Causality is very hard to fuck with in in tabletop. Um, but let's let's look at how let's look at how this game does time travel and and what's cool about it in terms of, of Chrono Trigger's universe. Um, also, Harper Hex, welcome back, thank you. Uh, let's let's do it. I'm gonna put it on wait mode because I'm gonna be talking while I do things. So there's there's our there's our main character, uh, Chrono. Um, spelled in a weird way. And I you know I never noticed this as a kid. Um, Josh Iggings, welcome back. Um, it's spelled Chrono like C R O N O, not C H R O N O, which I thought was weird. Um, but I get like, why would you name your kid? I mean, why would you name Chrono in the first place? But there's that kind of smug-looking like Toriyama face that we get he, that he draws sometimes. He's got the precursor uh, cloud hair. Um, totally not Goku. Definitely not Goku. Um, and uh, yeah, you know. And I guess here's a, here's a big difference between Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger. Chrono, uh, Chrono's kind of nothing. He's kind of a non-person, right? He gets characters around him. People have feelings and thoughts about him, but he doesn't, he's not really a person. We don't ever get to hear his thoughts or, or see what he has to say. There's that Super Nintendo sound chip. Ooh, putting in work. Morning, Chrono. Oh, Mom. Come on, sleepyhead. Get up. Ah, Lean's Bell makes such beautiful music. You were so excited about the Millennium Fair, you didn't sleep well, did you? I want you to behave yourself today. This, weirdly, this is actually very important advice. I want you to behave yourself today. Let's get moving now. So, classic Japanese role-playing game trope, right? Like, the kid and his mom, no dad. That cat sprite is very Toriyama and also very cute. Um, yeah, where, you know, where's my dad? Um, so, 
this is our first real view of the setting of the game. And immediately, if you expect a pure fantasy game uh, from this, like a medieval fantasy, uh, you can right away, you'll get thrown off by, check it out, I have a typewriter. Uh, I also have what looks like a radio. So it kind of goes to show that this game isn't set in the, um, it isn't set in the world you might expect, right? Um, otherwise, like, pretty standard stuff, right? Like, I'm going back to bed, fuck this. No, can't do it. Uh, otherwise, pretty standard stuff, right? Like, just like, kid's room, desk, book. Chrono sleeps in his clothes for, for some reason. I, I don't, I don't know why. Let's go downstairs, let's talk to our mom. Let's learn more about the universe and about me, you know, Chrono. Finally! By the way, that inventor friend of yours... Um... You know? Oh. Dear, I've forgotten her name! <laughs> what the fuck, Mom? It's obviously my friend Luca. So there's Luca. Uh, she's got glasses. And a cool helmet, so she's obviously a nerd. Um, let's go see our... Let's go see our cat. That's right, Luca. Don't forget she invited you to see her new invention. Run along now and be back before dinner. Kitty. Alright, so, you know, again, like, standard, standard stuff, like, I wouldn't really know where to place this house in terms of technology, because look, we've got a refrigerator. We've got a stove and a... Like, it looks pretty modern. Um, albeit a little rustic. Kitty, get off. Ah, oh, breakfast lettuce? A big bag of red things? Mom seems to be washing something. Mom, are you okay? Oh, I almost forgot. Here's your allowance, dear. Have fun at the fair. Yeah, 200 Gs. Alright, let's, uh... Let's go see what's up. So here's the world map. It's the year 1000 AD. Now, that can't possibly mean Anno Domini, because... You know. <laughs> uh, there's... So, immediately, like, the world map itself is beautiful, but because the scale is so much lower, like, Krona looks awful. Like, th that's a terrible sprite. But the rest of the map looks really cool. We're, we're quite a bit scaled out, right? Like, this is a much bigger... They have a lot more room to make the world than they do in Final Fantasy because we have this, like, pulled out... Uh, this pulled out world. Let's, um... I know we're supposed to go to the fair because in the preview, that's where all the frickin' balloons were and stuff. So let's, um... Let's go look around in these houses because we're a PC. We can go visit our neighbors. It's a little one-room shack. What's your name? That brat, Luca, says she's made the discovery of a lifetime. Call my friend a brat. Also, I'm huge for a kid. I'm a large kid. I'm so happy I can scream. It's a little terrifying. All right, this house is freaking me out. I'm leaving. All right, it's a residence. I was going to get market. Oh, hi. What the fuck is that thing? Visit our stall in Lean Square. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Ooh, the mayor's house. Hi. Do you know about our establishment? No. This is the mayor's education. Oh god. Don't 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 teach me how to play the game. Need a brief weapon and item seminar? No. I will take this tonic though. Scattered throughout this world are places where you can save your game. Save whenever you can, especially in unfamiliar or dangerous areas. This room is unfamiliar and dangerous. How do I save? Oh boy, menu screen. Alright, so here's, here's the menu screen. Uh, this shows me I'm going to get three characters in the game, uh, in my party. Standard stuff like stats, equipment, um, experience, next level, levels. Um, now, there is something here that's not going to make any sense until later. Why does it say lightning next to my name, right? We'll, we'll figure that out as we go. So I've got a wood sword, a hide cap, a hide tunic, and a bandana, which you can see around my head. This is like pretty normal RPG stuff. Got some items. 
Uh, there's a screen called Tech, which again, you know, we won't we won't figure out till later. But this is where all of our characters' special abilities are. Um, I have some options for messing with the. Uh, hold on, that's the B button. Um, I have some options for messing with the uh, settings, right? Battle mode, menu cursor, battle cursor, all this stuff. I'm gonna leave it as is. I don't really need to change around anything. Party member swap, and then my save point here. So let's uh, let's go ahead and save the game just to be sure. Or maybe it won't let me. I felt like I was standing on a save point. No. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let me save. <laughs> All right, asshole. Do you know about shelters? Yes, I know about them. Kind gesture. <laughs> Thanks, bite marks. Is that my is that my allowance? Can I go to the fair? Oh, it's not even a real save point. Okay. All right. So now this looks like the mayor's room, probably. Again, I think maybe this is part of what put me off about the Toriyama thing is that all his characters kind of look the same. So I'll teach you about skills. Are you willing to learn? No. Want my advice? Okay. You got potential. You'll learn a number of techniques as you progress. Techniques are magic attacks utilized with your weapons. Acquire them with discipline. Great. I'm gonna take your money though, so. Do you wanna learn about damage? Yeah, this is my tutorial room. This is just like the, um. It's like the menu, or the, uh, the room in, uh, Final Fantasy VI where you can go to the academy. Um. Something that's worth noting, do you see that? How I, like, started talking and then I ran away? Uh, that's a thing that you can do in this game that you can't do in Final Fantasy. It's a, another option. So there's a boat. That boat would probably take me, like, somewhere else. I'm not gonna go there. Well, Luca has her own island? Whoa! This is where my nerd friend lives. Look at all her D&D books. Complete Psionicist. Ninja Handbook. No elixirs in this clock. Weird generators and tubing all over her house. Oh, hi. Are you Luca's mom? Oh, hi, Chrono. Luca's off at Lean Square with her father, Taban, unveiling her new invention. Okay. Hey. Mom was not invited to the fair. Mom is. You gotta stay home, Mom. All right, so, so that's cool. Um, notice, like, the soundtrack change. There's town music right here, right? Like, cheerful town music. And then as I get further from town, the soundtrack changes. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to wander off into the, into the world. Bye, Mom. Bye, family. I'm going on an adventure. Goodbye. What's this other town? I've just left and gone to a whole other town. Oh, it's Pore. Let's, let's see what's going on in Pore. Hi, old man. <laughs> okay, I just spent 20 Gs to sleep in this inn. Mm, yeah, huh? Mm, what? Why is my face so small there? That was weird. All right, thanks, inn man. What else we got? Anything in the market? I want some of those breadsticks. I could buy a steel saber. I got enough money. No, I don't. It's 800. Karate gi. Some bronze armor. Sure. Completely in the wrong town. Snail stop? Some monsters coexist with humans. Like that piano player. 400 years ago, a woman named Fiona died trying to save the great forest that once flourished to the north. How sad. Chug, 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 chug. Everyone's over at the festival. What fools? Right, because you could be here drinking. Let's talk to this weird piano guy. I'm the piano man. Play something upbeat, please. How the fuck is he playing this on the piano? Yeah, what's up? Oh, he's saving his jerky. I don't, want, I don't want your 990G jerky. <laughs> so anyway... 
Let's see, snail stop. Is there anything else worth doing around here? A residence? I want to go to the festival too. It's cool, you could do it. It's only to the north. Grandpa and Grandma went to the 1,000th anniversary in truce. We're keeping an eye on things here. Right, so it's the year 1000 AD. I guess AD is like the number of years that we've had since the truce. The children are slipping away from us. It's so sad. Are they are they dying or Oh this guy's ripped! Ha! I run this town! And I'm so rich I don't know what to do with it all! I'll give you 10G if you act like a chicken! <laughs> Here you go, 10G! Wow, I just got 10G for acting like a chick. Yikes. <laughs> also, yeah, the Elder is Sabin in the future. Dad loves money more than he loves me. Everyone says daddy's greedy. They're lying, right? Ooh, shit. Treasure chest sealed with mysterious energy. I bet you will see those again. Now, you know what you didn't seal with the magic energy? This fucker. Hehehe, <laughs> see you later, kid. I stole your tent. Alright, let's go. Let's actually go to the fair. I've always thought that the world music was a little like, like this particular song was like a little, um, melancholy. The world music really sets the tone for, for the game because it, it, like, you hear it probably more than anything else except maybe like battle music, so. My favorite NPC in the whole game is in this town. Ho! Oh. Welcome to the Millennial Fair! <laughs> Have fun! I heard Luca and her dad have made another crazy invention. I hope it doesn't blow up like all the others. Haha, <laughs> Luca. This is Lean Square. They say people who hear Lean's bell ring will have interesting and happy lives. So a bronze helm and a karate gi. Where's Melchior? Yeah, look at this guy. Buy something from Melchior, the swordsmith! Nah, what you got, Melchior? Iron Blade, Load Sword. I mean, those are all really fucking expensive. I live on the continent of the east. Come see me sometime. Bully. <laughs> Look at this giant mustache. I heard this guy pays big bucks for charms, weapons, pendants, and other rarities. Hey, Lamus. The race is on. Be quiet and watch. Oh, can I, can I bet? Last round's winner, the Green Ambler. I bet on Steel Runner. Go, start the fucking thing, sure. Steel Runner. Go, go, go team, go. No, Steel Runner, do it. Seriously? Se fucking jackass, run faster. Come on. Go. Go, go, go. Uh, <laughs> you suck. Go faster! Stupid doll! Oh. Should have bet on GI Jogger. Last round's winner, Cadillac. Guess the winner? No. Cadillac, you're a sure bet. This is the renowned Tent of Horror. Spend your zero silver points. You know, I gotta go get some silver points. You know who's got silver points? My man, Gato. Yeah, that cat is fucking fast. Those runners are busy racing. They won't talk to you. Press the A button while facing the bell. Judge your distance carefully and press the A button again. Bam! I'm so strong! I got a silver point! This kingdom's been through a lot, like the war against Magus 400 years ago. <laughs> Thank goodness things are so peaceful now. Yeah, seriously. That Magus guy. He is an edgelord extreme. Um, I don't want to go to the Tent of Horrors. Let's go... 
That's a big deal. So what if we won a war against a wizard hundreds of years ago? So, um... You, you look important. So, setting the game setting the game here uh, in, a, uh, in a festival allows you, as a designer, as a person creating a world, to establish a status quo, right? Because if nothing else, festivals and celebrations are there to reinforce tradition, to say, this is how it has always been. Uh, it's a real good way to give the characters an excuse to learn things about the world by saying, this is what it's like here now, right? Um, it also sets us up to, as we'll see, understand the past and the future. It, it sets a good mark for, uh, for the world to say, this is a celebration of an event. We've been celebrating it for X amount of time. In the future, it may be different because of this thing that we're, uh, that we're, uh, we're looking at. Oh, Jesus. Hey. Oh, fuck. Ow, it hurt. Did she just pat her butt? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, are you, um, are you okay? Uh-oh, my pendant. Our illustrious champion returns. Hey, Kage. Welcome home. Oh, no, don't tell me I lost it. Are you, you okay? All right, it's, it's over here. Clary. Returned. Hi, welcome back. Look, I got your pendant. Oh, thank goodness, my pendant. It has a lot of sentimental and... And, you know, magical value. May I have it back? Oh, yes. Yes, you may. I came to see the festival. You, um, you live in this town, don't you? I, I feel a little out of place here. Would you mind if I walked around with you for a while? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's hang out. <laughs> You're a true gentleman. Oh, by the way, my name is, uh... I must have hit my head really hard. I'm having a hard time remembering. My name is Bulku? Go, go, Goma. Go, me, uh, Trunks. Her name is Marl. Uh, Marl, and, uh, you're Chrono. What a nice name. Pleased to meet you. Now, lead on. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, we're gonna go fuck up a robot. You ready? Where's that fucking robot? Hey, old man. No time to talk. I'm just sitting down for my lunch. I could eat it, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> kitty. Just listen. Listen to this kitty. You listen. Meow. So cute. Keep going if you want to demo Luca's robot battle trainer. Oh, oh, do I? <laughs> do I ever? Already? Here comes the best song in the whole game. Alright, Gato, let's do this thing. Ha <laughs> ha! I punched me in my face! So I slash him with my yellow sword. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah! So, Marl uses a crossbow. I guess she's just carrying that around. So this is how this is how we learn to play the fighting part of the game, right? Low stakes, I mean basically no stakes uh, combat with a uh, giant robot. We got a tech point, we got some experience. Uh, I imagine those are like AP. This is a, it's actually a really good beat. I, I really like it. Alright, Gato. We're out, man. <laughs> so anyway, we got some experience points. Uh, we got, uh, we got some, some tech points, basically. Um, let's take a look at, let's take a look at Marl. Um, so I'm lightning. Uh, she's water type. Um, and we've got enough experience. Let's do another one. Let's level up, right? Because we got 10 for that fight. Um, I guess I need to maybe heal Chrono. Because I got punched in the face a bunch of damn times. 
Just Marl Huff. Right, we got Cyclone and Aura. And they're like our they're like our magic for now. Alright, let's let's fight this guy. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Gato. Maybe I have to leave the screen. Gato, let's fight. I call me Gato. I have metal joints. Beat me up and earn 15 silver points. Let's do this thing. That's what I do when I get threatened too. My belly opens up and a fist pops out and punches people in the face. Come on, you gotta sing the Gato song, it's important. Alright, 10 experience, a tech point, here we go. Chrono and Marl level up. I love it. Yeah. Alright, Gato. So, I wonder, it's gotta be in intentional. Um, Gato, uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be something in Japanese, but uh, Gato is cat in Spanish, and he's got little cat ears. He's El Gato, the fighting cat robot. <laughs> I don't really, like, I don't know why, but that's that's the thing. Alright, so there's gotta be some more, like, good guy shit we can do in this, in this thing. We gotta go show our hot date a good time. I hate fairs. Say, do you know the latest gossip? Then scram. No, tell me the gossip. No, <laughs> shit, tell me the gossip. Just between us, I heard the king is distressed over his tomboy of a daughter. Just once I'd like to see how wild she really is. Princess has gone wild. Um, what's happening over here? Uh, where's my cat? Wow, oh, I know where your cat is. It's got to. Look, I found your cat. Bwom, 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 bwom. <laughs> Come on, kitty. Come on. Move, old man. Is that a pompadour or does he just have a really distended skull? That's got to be a pompadour. Look, I found this cat. I also really like that their, um, the symbol on these flags looks like an upside down cross. It's down as metal as fuck. Look, I found your dumb cat. You brought back my cat! Thank you! You're so sweet, Chrono. Uh, it's a soda guzzling contest! Alright, let's guzzle some fucking sodas. You ready? Here we go! Oh, you fucking god! Drink that soda! Oh. Yeah. Mountain Dew! Huh, oh, that hurt my arm. Oh. You're awfully competitive, aren't you, Chrono? Yeah, what? <laughs> After pressing the B button and dashing here and there, I'm pooped. But this dance has rejuvenated me. Yeah, see the B button to dash is what she's getting at there. Catchy rhythm. Press the X, Y, L, and R buttons to dance. All right, let's go. Let's get on stage. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dance. Cave dance. Ted dance. That's a dance move that I make. The ladder climb? Everybody do the ladder climb. Alright, everybody do the laugh in the middle of a dance. The surprise. The ladder climb. I, we don't know a lot of dance moves here in town. Okay. I'm done. I'm done dancing. We're done with this. A prehistoric dance. How enchanting. Okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna leave this weird dance party. Okay. Um, we found the old ladies. Let's let's take her back to the other part of the fair. Let's go look out here. Look at these swords. Do you like swords? I'm really into swords. I'm one of those guys that's really- Hi. Ooh, hi. We're standing very close. 
Buy something from Melchior? Anything cool, Melchior? No, you same shit as before. By the way, could you talk that young lady into selling her pendant? No. She said it has sentimental value. Jerk butt. Let's go into the te temple tent of horror. Let's see, we got 36 silver points. Let's see what we can do in here. Welcome to Norstein Beckler's lab. The spine tingling show is about to start. How many silver points would you like to pay? Fuck it, let's pay 10. That's all, that's all I can afford. <gasps> Soldier man. I'm Vix. I'm Wedge. So this this pre uh this pre uh predates uh the when they realize their names are Biggs and Wedge. I'm Piet, another Star Wars name. Weird choice though. Yeah, Norstein Beckler is Kefka, obviously. Find Vix. Oh Christ. Uh this one. Yes! <laughs> it's a Poyozo doll. It'll spruce up your room. Great. You're not gonna give it to your hot new, not definitely not the princess girlfriend. Watch, let's go show her how strong we are. Hey baby, check this out. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing. Okay, no, I'll do it. I'm, I'm really strong. <laughs> Fuck. Just hang hang on a minute. Yeah! Mm, first try. The other ones were practice. Whatever, don't worry about it. Um, alright. I feel like I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty done. Mm, I hate me. I know. So why, why do you stand here? Oh, they're still setting up. Come back in a while. Alright, we gotta do more shit. You have 27 silver points. Yeah, give me some. Give me some fucking gold. Is there anything else to do in this fair besides stealing that guy's money? It's over here. And this is the... Yeah. Alright, let's go talk to Fountain Girl again. Ah, there we go. They ought to be ready now. Make for the far side of the square. It's gonna be fun. Come on, Chrono. Okay, here we go. Hold your horses. I want to get some candy. Alright. Now oh, we have to be a good patient dude and just let her, like, dick around, right? Hi. I'd like some of this. Sure, young lady. Thanks for waiting. Because if you run off, she's all like, ah, what are you doing? I just want to look at the candy. Step right on up. Any of you who have the time and the courage, our super dimension warp is the invention of the century. To use it, jump up here. And you get teleported here. It's the masterwork of my beautiful daughter, Luca. I know that girl. You're my friend. We're friends. Chrono! <laughs> Where have you been? No one wants to try the telepod. Ah, how about you? <gasps> it looks like fun! Uh, I'll watch while you try it out. Mm -mm. Just, just hop onto the left pod. All systems on! Begin energy transfer. Oh no, there was a fly in the teleporter. Ooh, wow. Well, that worked out great. I teleported. Uh, so how how was it? Um, do you you want to try it again? <laughs> it worked. I can't believe it. Uh, I mean, a, a thrilling display of science at its best, ladies and gentlemen. What a kick! 
<laughs> I want to try it too. Uh, huh? Hey, Chrono, how'd you pick up a cutie like her? All right, head cannon. Luca is Luca is a lesbian now. Hang on, Chrono. I I'll be right there. Behold, ladies and gentlemen, as this vision of loveliness steps aboard the machine. And yeah, don't go away. I'll be right back. You're sure about this? There's still time to change your mind. <laughs> no way. Throw the switch. Okay, everyone, let's give her a great big hand when she reappears, which she certainly will do, and the game will be over. We'll all go back to our normal lives. Nothing weird or bad could possibly happen. All systems on. Begin energy transfer. Oh my, why is my boob glowing? What's happening? My, my pendant, it's... Huh? Oh shit, the game is happening! Um... Where, uh, what happened? Where did she go? Uh, well, I had a girlfriend for about five seconds. Yeah, sure you did, Colonel. No, d dude, I totally did. We went on a date and then she got sucked into another universe. It's not my fault. <laughs> uh, show's over, folks! Let's all head along now! Yeah, what a bummer. Weird show. What's going on, Luca? Where is she? Uh, the way she disappeared, it, it, could, it couldn't have been the telepod. The warp field seemed affected by her pendant. What are we gonna do now? She's so familiar. I know, I've seen her somewhere before. That's what I do when I'm thinking. This is very fucking disorienting. Alright, let's go look at her pendant. Logan, strap me in. I'm going after my imaginary girlfriend. See how heroic things got? Chrono! You're actually gonna do it? <laughs> what a fine lad. Listen, uh, I don't know where this machine's gonna send you, but we haven't any other choice. Won't they both be lost? This is our only hope. The pendant seems to be the key, so hang on to it, Chrono. Embrace yourself. All systems on! Uh, begin energy transfer. Power to full! Roger. More! Give me more power! Roger! Ah, there! We did it! We horribly overloaded the telepod. And now you're dead. I'll follow you after I know what went wrong, and I perform some tests, and I know that you're not being disintegrated because I value my life, but not your own. Bye, Chrono. Rip. That's what time travel looks like, or mescaline, whichever. <laughs> 